Where is Europe? What Europe? Why Europe? Praxis Europa is a coalition of people from academia, civil society, business, administration, and the culture sector. The members of this coalition wish to engage with the idea of a democratic, just, and sustainable Europe, and to end the threat of its disintegration. This film documents the activities of Praxis Europa within the first year of its existence. For a first Europe-wide meeting, over 40 participants from all over Europe were invited to Essen, Germany in October 2017. To formulate and develop ideas for the future of Europe, the Essen conference was structured into five working groups. In Berlin, we met Daphne Bullesbach, who is coordinating the working group Cosmopolitan Europe. We asked about her main hypothesis for the preparation of the conference. Today, the challenges that we see uh, in Europe, but also globally, are challenges that we cannot solve on the nation state level, challenges like climate change or migration. So it's really important to understand that we need to move beyond our national borders and cooperate on a European level or even on a global level. But, but the starting point for this discussion can be the, the city level, in fact, where we've seen amazing experiences of citizens' participation in cities like Madrid and Barcelona that shown us that you can run a city differently. And so it's, it's interesting to start from that perspective and see, okay, so what can we, how can we, in, in fact, practice a different Europe, even starting from the local level. At the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, we met Kira Finke, who is the coordinator for the working group named Global Cooperation. We spoke about her starting point for the discussion in Essen. Yeah, I, I work with people who are displaced because of climate change, so I see the effect of our emissions, our energy policy abroad, and with people who may not even know what climate change is. So I see that there is a historical responsibility of Europe to act, and the time to act is now. And the beautiful thing is that in Europe we have built this knowledge community which conserve our actions and we're actually able and capable to change our way of industry, of our way of building an economy. The sociologist and historian Misha Gabovich has initiated a working group called European Sites of Practice. We asked him why he chose this title for the discussion. My starting point is that what holds us together as communities isn't just institutions or values, it's also very specific things and places that are important to our everyday lives, like parks that we might go for a walk in, or you know, buildings that we're familiar with, or just everyday objects that we, that we use. And very often we don't even think about those things until we feel that they're being threatened. And these things are what I call common places or sites of practice. They're shared, they matter to all of us, but they matter to each of us in different ways. So my idea for this workshop is that we come together and try to identify important things, important places that matter to us very deeply, that we have different attachments to, and try to articulate these attachments and think about the ways in which we feel that they are being threatened by the political crisis that we're currently in. So, hello everybody. Nice to see you again, or first time. We're happy that you made it. Uh, this is an experiment. Um, I just wanted to mention the context we are in. I think uh, Europe is in a very critical situation right now. There was some hope, let's say, after the election of, the, of a president in Austria last December. This was a green uh, president that was elected. 
Then came the Dutch election with uh, not having uh, Gerard Wilders uh, in an important position in the Netherlands. Then came the French election with having a president now who put Europe in the focus. Whatever you have in mind about Macron, and there's a lot of critics of, uh, of Macron, <coughs> he did it. He did it what then the German uh, campaign, the Austrian campaign, the Czech campaign, which comes to an end tomorrow, etc., the Italian campaign, avoid. Not mentioning Europe at all, but um, giving, giving in to nationalists of, uh, of all kinds. You have been selected, carefully selected. We discussed with the workshop leaders a lot about whom to invite. Not only because of what you have published as one would in a traditional conference, but also because of who you are, um, because of the initiatives you have already launched, or because of the potential, maybe, that people have told us, well, you have to invite this person, because he knows good people in this country, and it would be beneficial to the whole group to have them present. Um, and this is very much the spirit of this gathering, and as Klaus already said, it is an experiment. We have a couple of cleavages in Europe, uh, North-South, East-West, uh, liberals, conservatives, left-wing, uh, old and young, rich and poor, capital and work, so, uh, labor. Uh, so we have a lot of, of, of cleavages and we have to deal with them in a creative way. So we will not gloss over, neither here in our convention nor in general. It would be nice if instead of always confirming and affirming the Europe of values, we would think about, um, uh, um, about a Europe of political action and learning. I'm uh, part of the uh, Social Europe uh, Working Group. Uh, we are uh, dealing with uh, two general ideas. The one is uh, the European um, Unemployment Insurance Scheme. The other is the Universal Basic Income. I'm in the workshop of Global Cooperation and we're trying to focus on providing perspective of action in the field of climate change. I was a participant in the Sites of Practice workshop and um, it was uh, made up of very different people coming from very different areas of practice, um, but all looking at how um, our ideas of Europe or European heritage or European values are situated in specific sites, with the idea behind that that if we want to address um, questions of image or rising populism or... Um, Value, values, changing values at the moment, this can start at a very local level in specific sites of practice. In our group, which is called Beyond Bologna, about the, um, about the future of, of, acad of academia as practice and also as learning, um, we brought together experiences from, from exile, just very recently uh, uh, in, uh, in Turkey, and we have learned during our session that now the Academy of Exile, founded by KVE, is now an uh, enemy of the people in Turkey, and this uh, explained that there is a direct political dimension to what we are talking about, but it was, uh, there were also people in the group uh, trying to establish new institutions in Germany, and we, uh, it was quite surprising that there are some issues in common. And not in a direct sense, but here being in this post-industrial place, a site of heritage, there's a question about the future of how we produce knowledge in a, for a post-industrial society, and the academic institutions still uh, resemble an industrial way of production of knowledge. I am part uh, of the group that is dealing with cosmopolitan Europe, and uh, we, are, we started from the basics. Um, first of all, we want to define what we mean by cosmopolitan, and then we also want to see how it can um, be made into something uh, practical and concrete and maybe to give some um, ideas how we can 
continue. Uh, we have in the group uh, people from the uh, Italian town of Padova explaining uh, their situation. We have me as part from Belgrade, uh, one of Belgrade municipality, and uh, we have Sweden, we have um, Austria uh, represented in the group, so it's very interesting. Der Gott, der schändet, hätte als Gründungsmythos abscheulich genug sein können, doch er wurde in der Geschichte Europas noch weit übertroffen. Europa ist heute Inbegriff der Freiheit und des Wohlstands, des Friedens und der demokratischen Rechtsstaatlichkeit. Es ist kein Paradies, aber doch blickt man sich in der Welt um ein fast beispielloses Idyll. Eines allerdings, an dessen Rändern Krieg und staatliche Willkür herrscht und in dessen Innerem manche Ortsfreiheit und Rechtsstaatlichkeit wieder bedroht sind. Es ist zudem ein Idyll, das sich auf Ruinen gründet. Ruinen von Häusern, von Städten und Landstrichen, aber mehr noch auf Ruinen einer Vernunft, die das hellenistische Europa groß gemacht hatte und sich schließlich selbst widerlegte und zerstörte. Ja, für mich aus Belarus ist Europa nicht mehr eine Idyll, weil einerseits ist für uns sehr wichtig, aus dem Horizont des Holocaustes über Europa und Belarus in diesem Kontext zu sprechen, weil wir Belarusen auch Verantwortung dafür tragen, was in dieser Zeit passierte und das hilft uns, über uns selbst ernsthaft zu denken. Und andererseits, wenn wir über Europa heutzutage denken, dann sehen wir, wie, wie viele Widersprüche heute in Europa herrschen, Flüchtlinge, neue politische, konservative Bewegungen und Parteien und verschiedene Werte, die in Konflikt treten. Und ich finde es sehr wichtig, dass wir das ernsthaft wahrnehmen und nicht idyllisch und dass wir durch diese ernsthafte, seriöse Wahrnehmung darauf antworten. Und äh, so über Europa, vielleicht nicht als Ruinen, sondern als, äh, äh, hm, als Voraussetzung, auf diese Fragen ernst, ernsthaft zu antworten, ist sehr wichtig heute zu denken. Wichtiger als über eine Idylle, die irgendwann in der Vergangenheit kurze Zeit in Europa möglich war. What is also important, I can see, I can observe a lot of contradictions within the European project that, uh, that emerged, uh, especially recently, uh, especially after the Brexit. Uh, we have uh, different um, competing visions of uh, the further integration. And I think uh, that to Uh, to meet and to confront people representing such different backgrounds and such different countries and societies uh, is the uh, crucial condition uh, to, to elaborate, to work out uh, an agenda that would be on one hand pro-European, on the other, so it would be in favor of the further, ever closer uh, union and integration, but on the other hand would be acceptable and inclusive for as many actors as possible, meaning uh, different societies and different strata of the society. Acceptable and inclusive for as many actors as possible, meaning uh, different societies and different strata of the society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I comment on that? If you will. Yeah. Uh, I did really, I, I do really like what, what Michal said. And I, I mean, I do believe there is a lot of contradictions in the, in the field of the, um, in, of the European politics. And the challenges we have to face, one of them is, uh, we talk a lot about the, what, what, what does it mean to be European? And what kind of uh, perspective is the European one? But we have to think, uh, Uh, and redefine the meaning of, of, the, uh, yeah, of the nation state and take it much more serious than we, when we, when we did it uh, before. I'm, I'm afraid it will be something that we cannot ignore today.
In Gdańsk we created the European Solidarity Center and we created a permanent exhibition showing uh, how the uh, oppositional culture, the dissident culture in the 70s and 80s uh, uh, was developed, was born and developed uh, also into a social movement, solidarity that taken an important part, important role, played an important role in, in uh, destabilizing the system and led to the, to the fall of communism 1989-1990. And, uh, but the center is called European Solidarity Center and many people, especially from Germany, uh, coming to, to the center asking what does this European mean when you tell the story uh, so strongly focused on the, yeah, let's say, national history. And what I do believe is to, uh, it's not a contradiction. It does not have to be a universal European experience. And it can be a very strongly situated experience of, of the local community of, uh, or the, I don't know, the, the nation, the, one society. Uh, but, but it's a kind of experience that shows what does it mean to be a part of the broader history, the history of freedom or history of, of, of the uh, developing democracy in Europe. In dem Augenblick während der Landung auf dem Zagreber Flughafen schien es mir, dass der junge Mann in der Tat ein Schatten war, so wie Milia so wie es mit seiner freiwilligen Selbstausschaltung auch Frank geworden ist. Wie Millionen anderer Schattenmenschen führen sie ein Parallelleben. Es sind Millionen Menschen ohne Stimme, nicht einmal anonyme Wähler, und dennoch Menschen, die das Leben Europas in Gang setzen, vorantreiben und aufrechterhalten. Europa ist ein riesiger Walfisch und diese Menschen sind Schiffshalter, Fische, die die Haut des Walfischs sauber halten und sich auf diese Weise zugleich ernähren. Gäbe es keine Schiffshalter, sagen Fischexperten, würden die Wale eingehen. We can not only engage them in a local level, but in a European level, if we find ways of also networking the cities across Europe and take these experiences for something that goes beyond just the local and city level. But we have to say that uh Present time, uh, cities uh, are both uh, the space uh, where new forms of uh, exploitation, new forms of domination are experienced, and the place where new forms of resistance, new forms of cooperation, new forms of uh, protesting and uh, inventing alternatives uh, to the existing condition uh, are created. And in this sense, uh, uh, the connection between uh, social movement on urban level and uh, new experience uh, in local government, uh, able to acknowledge the protagonism of citizens, uh, are the most important answer uh, we can uh, show in front the risk uh, to be stacked uh, into a false alternative between two options. The two options uh, offered uh, by the mainstream are to be part of uh, the preservation of status quo, and the other option is uh, to follow the backlash of uh, isolation, closure, uh, coming back uh, to old identities, coming back uh, to old, narrow spaces. In this sense, uh, the discussion we had in our workshop uh, is also about the need to change attitude. There are a lot of alternatives uh, we could be able, from different point of view, from different uh, geographical, social, cultural context uh, that we are able to propose. And most of these alternatives are already in place. But the local level has this challenge of scaling up or, or making its ideas spread. And I think the European Union has a little bit of this role in, in, in picking up good examples or financing projects and also creating this idea of 
uh, it's, it's a community of local levels. It's a community of, of people at the end. But also uh, this idea of a shared space, I think it adds to this. Last year, in the local elections held in Belgrade, I uh, was elected as a deputy in the Assembly of Municipality of Chukarica. It's a big, one of the biggest municipalities in Belgrade. I learned a lot in this year, uh, what are the local problems uh, and how we can um, maybe learn how to solve them and uh, implement best, best practices uh, from other um, more successful towns, even more uh, more developed town. Uh, therefore, I uh, hope that I can explain uh, what is the need uh, that is present in the Belgrade, but also in the whole many similar places in the Western Balkan region. Some of the things that I've done in terms of climate change activism, energy transition activism, has been very, very local. So related to a municipal uh, regime that we don't necessarily agree with, right? Uh, opening coal power plants instead of closing them down, for instance. But um, what you do is you learn from other initiatives that take place uh, around Europe to, to learn from, how, uh, from their struggles and how they uh, collaborate or antagonize with uh, local municipalities. So because if you learn from them and are in contact with them, then you can become more efficient yourself in your local um, campaign. So it's very important to stay connected to various activist, uh, actions going on in, in Europe. La nostra esperienza non è una novità nel contesto europeo, ci sono esempi in Italia come Bologna, ad esempio, ma Bar Barcellona, Madrid, dei paesi della Francia e anche fuori dall'Europa, eh, negli Stati Uniti. Sono eh, situazioni appunto in cui i cittadini si mettono insieme e cambiano un po' il metodo di, di prendere decisioni, di fare politica. Io credo che mettere in connessione queste pratiche, non solo in Italia ma a livello europeo, possa consentire di, uh, di costruire una relazione che vada a dialogare direttamente con l'Unione Europea, come se gli Stati piano piano, come naturale, perdessero le proprie competenze e diventassero protagoniste le città, i comuni, per mantenere quel rapporto con i cittadini che a livello di istituzioni europee diventa impossibile. Quindi si dovrebbe rafforzare il Parlamento Europeo, il potere del Parlamento Europeo, che è l'organo rappresentativo dei cittadini, e allo stesso tempo per rafforzare una rete di città che dialogano con il Parlamento a livello europeo. Für die venezianische Flotte zur Ödnis abgeholzt, wurde das weiße, staubige Karstland erst um die Wende zum 20. Jahrhundert wieder aufgeforstet. Die einen sagen von den Österreichern, die anderen behaupten von den Italienern und die Slowenen, die sich immer in den Dörfern und Dolinen mit dem Leben auf diesem Boden abgemüht haben, nicken zum einen oder anderen, je nachdem. Es ist eine dünn besiedelte arme Leutegegend, die zum Hinterland und für Strafversetzungen taugte, bis sie von der Dichtung entdeckt wurde. The challenge that we're facing uh, is the one that uh, Klaus mentioned at the beginning of this uh, meeting and conference, the cleavage. We are living in divided societies with a space lacking for those divided communities to meet. That one can, uh, uh, can meet that challenge in the field of the public sphere in terms of media. We choose a different way to challenge it. Basically, our idea and the proposal of a process as product is to start from the composition of this Praxis Europa conference. It means that in different fields, academics, local authorities, civil society and social movement activists, most of us and many other people outside of there are agents of change. It means that uh, in their field, uh, in their cities, uh, they are already carrying alternatives uh, which can address uh, this big challenge uh, of uh, uh, divided society, divided uh, cities, divided communities. 
So uh, if we are talking um, about the final product, one product would be this uh, networking and infrastructure of festivals that are already existing. And the other product, more uh, tangible, would be toolkit for divided cities. So we, at this point, will not say which cities these are, but basically there are cities that are divided and coping with this problem, uh, with this situation uh, on the good way. So they have some good practices of managing conflicts or connecting people, uh, overcoming the um, uh, groups that are not uh, um, included and so on. Uh, so therefore, our idea is to prepare uh, a toolkit, which is material object plus the you know, teaching, in which we will collect top 10 problems of divided cities and produce a uh, uh, story. Uh, we, we will see how the problems are solved. And after that, produce 10 success stories. So uh, the very modest practical results that we came up with are based on the idea that we've discussed a range of alternative cultural and social techniques. You heard about one example, which is the New Patrons Initiative, which has already realized about 500 projects where local communities were put together with a mediator who found an artist who created something that made sense for the local community around sites or objects that are difficult to articulate for outsiders. We heard other projects from Andre's research about infrastructure, where very similarly, people came together around, for example, a disappearing tram or trolleybus structure. And uh, by thinking about what to do about this disappearance, they started seeing themselves as part of a sort of general European ecology of objects. So uh, we will start with building a database about the existing projects managed by uh, the new patrons. Um, so Alexander has pledged to start working on that database, and we will have a workshop where we will think about the kinds of parameters that need to go into it. Um, and we will then uh, think of a research project that might accompany future projects of the new patrons. Um, and we also talked about maps. We will try to map the undermapped in Europe, uh, meaning that uh, very often when we zoom out of the European map, what we are left with are just the mega centers, Paris, Berlin, Moscow, etc. Instead, um, Andre suggested that we create a map where we can zoom out and what it shows us are the small remote places that have a weak uh, position in the infrastructure that are difficult to reach, but where interesting things like this are going on or should be going on. We as a group should be initiators and the next year there will be uh, uh, similar event and we need to bring more people because we need to, um, let's say, mobilize people who think that Europe must be stronger and not just uh, um, accepting the current situation with the uh, right wing and retrograde trends gaining. Has there been something said during the conference that you found especially striking or important? Uh, no, <laughs> I, but I think it's. A, <laughs> I think the uh, interesting thing about s such a meeting is that the people meet, and uh, what I feel it's a kind of tension people are coming with, and it's a, uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, first of all, it's it's really worth to meet with some expectations, needs, uh, troubles, uh, and talk about it in a, such a community like, uh, or, uh, like, like this one today and yesterday. And I do think it's, do not even have a, you know, um, a direct impact on the future. So with, uh, with, I mean, concrete aims and effects and products. It's much more important is just to meet and to talk to each other and to, to exchange also the experiences. A good few of you met and met through us and this weekend and this will continue in some form or other. We're not going to fetishize Praxis Europa. You don't have to, you know, this is, doesn't have to be one more institution doing something with Europe, in Europe. Um, you don't have to put the logo on everything that comes out of this, but if you want to, you can use it. 
I would really like to thank you for this opening thing. Um, uh, I hope we can find a, a way to meet again, let's say in a year or so, but don't rely on us as the funders or the, 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 those who invite. Be active and make some proposals and uh, probably there will be possibilities on these festivals uh, and other occasions to meet. Uh, that's from my side. Uh, once more, thank you very much. And I invite you to do your own personal wrap-up now in ten words. And you count ten words very easily because you have ten fingers. Um, different fields. New friends. Um, wild ideas. Hope for future collaboration. Wow. I miss connecting with some of you and hope to. <laughs> Positively surprised by ability to understand each other despite uh, different uh, backgrounds. Thank you. Thank you.